everyone, Ashley from 45 Drives, coming at you from a new studio. So today, disaster recovery versus high availability. More specifically, what do each of these terms mean and how do they differ from one another? Let's chat more to find out. Disaster recovery and high availability are sometimes used interchangeably, but they're not the same thing. We're going to quickly break them down in today's tech tip. Let's start first with disaster recovery and how that's defined. Disaster recovery essentially comes down to protecting your data from loss, plain and simple. Imagine you lost a server, be it from a flood, physical theft, a cyber attack, whatever the case might be. How do you get that back? Well, disaster recovery is about preparing for the worst case scenario and having a strategy in place to ensure that your data is protected. That's pretty much what it comes down to. It's largely a strategic plan combined with the design of your infrastructure to guarantee that your data can be recovered in the event of a disaster, as well as to make sure that the data will be secure and available. This might sound like it's just having a backup of your data in place, but it's so much more than that. If your system gets destroyed completely and you have a week old backup without a plan to get your servers running again, you're in a stressful situation, regardless if that data exists or not. The same goes for, say, a fire happening in your office. Of course, let's hope that never happens, but the point remains. Without a plan or procedures in place, to restore your data, it's basically as if you haven't been backing it up at all. Disaster recovery not only safeguards your data through backups, but it's planning for situations that could result in its loss. More importantly, the steps taken for how you recover from an emergency and to minimize surprise expenses. Another good practice when it comes to disaster recovery is having your backup data stored in a geographically separate location. This will ensure that it isn't destroyed with the rest of your data, which can be done over your local network or through the internet. Of course, accounting for all of this will ultimately come down to your budget, how quickly you need your data restored, and how much data loss you can actually tolerate, factoring in how old your backups need to be here. Plus, now with our Houston UI, Setting up and managing disaster recovery solutions is so much easier. It really helps to mitigate the worries and stress sometimes associated with creating these infrastructure designs. Now, let's talk about high availability. High availability, on the other hand, is the way that your storage infrastructure is designed to essentially minimize or even eliminate costly downtime by ensuring that you have a failover solution in place. High availability is meant to address periodic outages that can be caused by hardware failure or routine downtime for, say, maintenance and repair. We talk about highly available data sets a lot when we discuss clustering. Generally, it's measured as a percentage, with 100% meaning that your data is always available, but there are lower returns as that percentage goes higher. Most commonly, for those looking for extremely high availability, the target is around 99.99, you get the idea, percent available, or roughly five minutes of downtime a year. Redundancy is the main way to achieve a highly available system, and it's typically done at the server level through, you guessed it, clustering. One of the main rules of conduct when designing a highly available storage solution is eliminating any single point of failure. This is important to do because it guarantees that if a single component is failing or has failed, your system's performance will not be impacted. When you've got multiple servers in place, especially, it's really important that failures are detected and that your workloads are redirected. With a 45 drives clustered solution, even when you have to do maintenance on it or if an entire server goes down, your data will still be available. And to note, 
getting into the range of large amounts of redundancy, it can be quite expensive. So it's important to balance up the costs with your performance and storage requirements. One final thing about high availability to you before I wrap this up. It also exists on the component level, like redundant power supplies and switches. Both can help to present a single server from going down and prevent needing to fail over. Now let's summarize. Starting first with disaster recovery. Disaster recovery is essential for dealing with worst case scenarios. It will help you get your storage systems up and running as quickly as possible in the event of an emergency. We also strongly suggest keeping your backup at separate geographical locations. Disaster recovery is a higher level of implementation and it consists of a combination of planning and technology design. Disaster recovery is also asynchronous, meaning it's a one-way sync from your primary location to somewhere else. If you make changes in one location, it does not get sent back to the primary. However, with our new ZFS module within Houston, it's now even easier to set up and manage your disaster recovery application. It really makes managing this step a breeze, no matter your experience level. And now, high availability. High availability is a way that you can design your storage system to minimize downtime and the impact of it. Eliminating single points of failure is a core principle of high availability. It also protects from hardware failure without any data loss. High availability is also synchronous, meaning it's a two-way sync between locations. Brett covers this in more detail in our part one video, The Do's and Don'ts of Multi-Site Clustering. The link will be at the end of the video. Go check it out if you want to learn more. We shared a lot of information today in this video, but hopefully it's been helpful. And as always, check out a variety of other videos that cover both of these topics in some detail as they pertain to ZFS and our easy to use Houston module along with clustering. Please don't hesitate to send us an email if you have any questions or drop them in the comments below. Our team of account managers and data storage engineers are more than happy to help. Until next time, thanks for watching. Have a great week.